get now to some of the hottest topics that you'll certainly be talking about at the dinner table, beginning with this, uh, the use of drones to target and kill suspected terrorists overseas. Expected to get a good hard look at this afternoon on Capitol Hill because the man who oversees the White House kill list is appearing right now in front of the Senate Intelligence Committee. John Brennan is President Obama's pick to head America's spy agency, the CIA, and some Democrats plan to grill Brennan about the drone program. One of the bigger issues here, how the administration justifies marking Americans for death by drone strike. Let me bring in my panel for you, economist and author Ben Stein. Back today, Lauren Ashburn, editor-in-chief of The Daily Download. Also today, syndicated columnist and radio host David Sirota. You can read his work at salon.com. He is also a contributor to The Huffington Post and our regular on this show, CNN legal analyst and former federal prosecutor Sonny Hostin. So welcome to all of you. David Sirota, let me begin with you here. Uh, broadening this discussion out, what do you think? Under what circumstances should, should the U.S. be allowed to kill Americans? Well, I think under the, under, under the law, the first situation should be that, that the U.S. actually brings a single charge against the people that it's targeting for assassination. I think that's what's missed here, is that we are having a drone war that, that's going on, but the U.S. citizens that have been targeted for assassination have not been charged with crimes. And so the question in a democratic republic like the United States, where there's supposed to be a check on power, the question should be, why is the government not even charging the people that it's assassinating? with a single crime. It shouldn't be too hard if the evidence is so overwhelming that you know you want to execute somebody. It shouldn't be too much to ask for the government to at least bring a charge of a crime. The fact that the government hasn't should raise real questions about who is on the president's kill list, who is being targeted. Another part of this story is collateral damage, right? Because I think of the American Anwar al awlaki who we targeted and killed in Yemen. We also tar uh, ended up killing as collateral damage his, his son, the 16-year-old, who apparently meant no harm but was taken out. Uh, at, at what point can we go too far, the U.S. go too far? Lauren. Well, I think that Americans, first of all, have a right to know, you know, who is murdering in their name. And I think a lot of that has to do with this great scoop that Michael Isakoff had out of NBC News. It's right, 18 pages. Right, the memo that was actually found. And I think that as far as his, as far as the, the involvement and the information that, that came out, we have a right to know that. You know, it's not operational movements by troops. I think that people would like to know who is being but, killed and being targeted. But how much, Sonny Hostin, should we know? I mean, it, it, I know a lot of people are pushing, and I know that that white paper that now the White House has agreed to let some folks in Congress take a look at. Some people are pushing to let the public, you know, lift the ba lift the veil uh, of secrecy, Sonny Hostin. Wh what do you think? How much should we know? Is, is too much too much? You know, I, I think there's a real tension here, Brooke, between um, national security and the need to know and the transparency in the law. Yes, I do think under the Constitution, people should be concerned that uh, Americans are being targeted, killed, assassinated without due process, as, as has been mentioned already, without being charged, without being seen in a court of law. But then you also have this war on terror. And how much do we really need to know that ultimately that could compromise national security and I think that's really where um, the tension is right now. Ben Stein, what do you think about all of this? Well, well, the whole world has changed. I mean, I agree with what all the people before me said. It's a very serious situation for the president to issue himself a 008 license to kill uh, and, and we don't like to see it happening. But uh, we're at war. We're at war with people who are in the shadows, as, as they say in the James Bond movie. We're at war with people who cannot be found easily. We cannot uh, bring them before a court of law. And we know that they mean harm to Americans, by and large. At least we say we do. It does, it does however, involve putting an awful lot of trust in the president and the National Security Advisor and the CIA to do it right. But I don't see any alternative. Obviously, we cannot let these people who intend to do harm to Americans and to other innocent people all over the world just wander around freely without stopping them in some way. It's, and to ask to indict them in a court of law, it would be wonderful if we could do it, but it just doesn't seem to be the way the world works anymore. Let me